So the goal here is for when Team sees the word ChatGPT in a channel, it will take the rest of that question, submit it to an API, and it'll come back and respond to it. Now, I haven't set this up yet, so these are just some sample questions, but we will get going. First thing we need to do is create a channel. Um, I like to call the channel ChatGPT so that your staff know that all these questions, whatever you submit here, will get submitted to the API because you don't want to put in sensitive information. So this is uh, what I do for best practice. I'm going to take you through all the steps. Uh, here we go. Step one is um, this requires uh, Power Automate Premium Connector, and you may not have that. That's the Power Automate per user plan. Uh, and so if you want to do this, you can still do it by using a developer tenant. So go to this link. I'll put the links in the description. Um, go to this, create your own tenant. Uh, developer tenants are awesome. They're E5 licenses. You don't have to be a developer. You get everything, uh, but you don't get the pot power made premium. I'm going to show you how you can get that for 30 days so that you can do this. So everyone should be able to do what we're doing. You need to get the 30 day trial license of power automate premium. What you do to do that is actually look for power apps and uh, because power automate is part of power apps. I know this sounds confusing, but it, it's not that bad. You just look for power apps per user plan and you hit, uh, I've already got it. So you hit this trial button and you get the trial. Then you need to go to your licenses, go to your power apps plan to trial and assign the license to your user. Now we need an API key. API key is used to call the API. Yeah, I know, rocket science. So I'm going to create a new secret. Now I've hidden this from you, but maybe you can do a CSI and enhance that image. Okay, that doesn't work in the real world. Um, you gotta love David Crusoe. All right, so I copy this. And the first thing I do is create the connector. New connections, open. All right, you're looking for this one, open AI independent publisher. You actually have to type bearer space and the key. Accept and create. There's your connector. All right. Now we're going to go to import flow, my flows. If you did see the key, I'm, I'm deleting it. So you, it won't be useful anyways. Import. And this is a legacy. Upload. Find your zip package. Select your connection. And then select that one connection you just created and import. Click on my flows. And you can tell it's got the premium license for the flow. Click on it. You're going to edit the flow. You shouldn't have to change any of this. I'll go over the flow in a minute for in case you want to make it yourself instead of importing it. The only two things you should have to change are the team. So pick Power Automate testing or whatever team you're using and pick your channel, your chat GPT. Then you hit save. And apparently I need to authorize some connectors. So you hit the flow checker. So I need to change the connection. There it is. So flow checker is your friend. That that was by design to help you learn power automate. So there you go. You got green light. Let's see if this thing works. Any Monty Python fans? Apparently Chad GPT didn't get the joke. But Hey, looks good enough to me. So let's go over this flow. So we'll go back here, edit. And I'll, there's a couple little tricks uh, when I made this flow that you might want to keep in mind. All right, 
So obviously keywords, I'm using chat GPT. I think it's case sensitive, although I don't know that. Uh, I initialize two variables for the channel and the team so that you don't have to use it again. Uh, and then I set the variable uh, here. Uh, so I, I initialize it and then set it. That's just how I did it. Um, all right, so we're getting the message details. Message channel, team channel, and reply to message. And then this is our chat GPT. We get the body content. I just left all these things. You can change this max tokens to like 400. That'll give you more data. We'll come back. Otherwise, it might be a little bit short. Um, all right. And then here's the, the good stuff. Now, the first thing that I do is I get the data back. And I'm using this expression to replace the word chat GPT. If it came back as a response, if it included the word chat GPT, I didn't want it to trigger itself. So I'm like, well, you can replace chat GPT, th that text with anything, and then it won't trigger itself again. You can replace it with nothing. I decided to replace it with Trump in uppercase letters. A little humor. All right. So, and that's the, I'll put the text in the description as well. Uh, but that's the replace command. Okay. And then I use that and I do a condition here to check to see if this is the initial message in a thread, in a channel thread, or if this is a reply to a message in a channel thread. Because depending on those, you have to do something different. So I'm like, is the reply to message ID, is it null? If it is null, then I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna reply with uh, message ID and the output is there, which that's the sanitized output with the no chat GPT in it for sure. And then if it's not, I'm gonna do use the reply to message ID. So there it is there. And the same thing. And that's all there is to it. I actually have another flow that works on for selected message. And so that way you can use it in any channel and any chat even. Now that one's a little bit of a longer flow and we'll do that another time. I hope you like and subscribe. Hope you're having a good day.